Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So, from a viewer's request, they wanted to see how the Yonex stringing team strings a racket. So that's what I'm going to do today. I didn't think I would string a racket for you guys, but I'm going to do it today. As instructed by the Yonex stringing team, the way they want us to do it. So, we'll start in a minute. Okay, so. I'm not gonna go through the basics of stringing a racket. I'm just gonna do the techniques in which Yonex want us to do. So I may skip through a lot of things that you guys already know. Um, if you want any other things from, you know, basic wise, ask me a question, I'll answer those for you. So I'm just gonna go through the technique that they want us to do it, okay? So to start, they want us to align the racket to the machine always in the same way. So as you can see by the butt cap, it says, I say yo-yo, YY, right? It has to be lined up with that symbol facing up. So if it's a Wilson, it has to be W's up, okay? So it can never be like that, never. So it always has to be lined up straight up like that. So I'm gonna put it on the machine. Now I'm gonna angle it this way so you guys can see. Always, the 12 o'clock top in first. Six o'clock in, okay? So it's held on now, just barely. And then the rest, oop, I'm not lined up, see? There. So just fingertip tight right now. We don't want to tighten it up too much. Okay, so that's in now. 12 and six tighten, fingertip. Outer, the braces tighten. So this is a six point machine which we use over there. So tight, tight, fingertip tight. So we just don't want this thing to move around, okay? So we're done. Okay, everything's touched, everything it's, it's held down. Okay, so that's step one, getting it on. Now some people take it as far as top, bottom, all the time. So sometimes we put a T here, and then we put a, a H for head, T for throat, okay? Head, throat. So we know to put it in the same way all the time. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through going to tension and all that stuff, it's already been set. Um, I'm gonna start the mains now. Just like any, any of you guys start your mains, I'm just gonna go through the, the middle of the, the racket. Fifty, as you guys know, I'm gonna clamp it close to here, as close to the the racket as possible. Okay, so I'm gonna take starting clamp, put it here. So just in case there's any kind of slippage, okay? Level off the string here, right? Go around the Diablo. I'm gonna pull my first main. So as you can see, I'm pulling the opposite side. You guys know that. And then I'm gonna clamp it as close as possible, right there, okay? And release. Now, we don't go over this. We don't go over this racket. We go under this racket, okay? So this, the string is never on top of the racket, pushing it down.
So what I'm gonna do, what they say is do three mains, do four mains on the other side, two, two, two until you're done. So that's three. I'm just gonna run this one down just for speed um, and then take the other side and start there. Now, they want, they want us, Yonix wants us to release, release the bottom before the top, okay? So base clamp and then clamp. Going back here. Base clamp, regular clamp, close as possible. Now, I'm at the last, I'm at the last mains on both sides now. Use the nut feature on the, on the machine, which increases the tension by 10%. So, 10% uh, 10, 10 more than what it is. I'm doing this racket up. 48 pounds, it's adding uh, 4.8 pounds to it. So, to the last. The last mains. Like, so, a lot of you think that knot feature is to tie a knot. That's not to tie a knot. It's to do the last mains and whenever you're knotting. So I'm gonna tie this to the closest one I can, which is gonna be that one, the one the closest they'll allow me. So you guys know how to tie a knot already. So it's a it's an ending knot over, under, through once, right? I mean if you wanna be whatever, they want you to do it like this and then hold hold that take this push it pull it towards you away from you towards you and take the other one so you pre do it do the second one already so towards you away from you up towards you right and then what holding tension on the knot let go of this okay Face first, boom, that's it. You're done there, okay? So, same thing on the other side. Over, under, through. All right, over, under, through. Holding it, though. So, I take this again. I pull it towards me to tighten it, pull it away, up, and then towards me, All right? And then I take the second one that I did, that I pre-did, they call it the tail, I guess, towards me, up, away, towards me. Okay, so holding, holding the tension on the knot, let go of the base, let go of the clamp, and you're done. One eighth of an inch is what they want tucked in after. So it's about tucked it. That's a little long, but it's close enough on that one. Okay, so we're done with the mains. Okay, I'm gonna take off the knot feature, which is good. Done. And I'm gonna take my cross. Now, this is where it's going to get a little interesting. Um, instead of doing the first cross, 
weaving through the first cross. We're going to weave through the second cross. So, into the second cross. All right, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna double back into that first cross. So I double back into the first. Okay, I want to make sure I reach the, the machine later on. So here's where it gets interesting. I take starting clamp and I hold there. Okay, so I string another through. I haven't tensioned anything yet. So again, you see me stringing at a 45 degree angle going that way. Okay, so I'm ready to pull my first cross now. So what they want is for me to pull the second cross first while being held on by this uh, starting clamp. So check this out. I'm gonna do my thing. Okay, so that's what I do. I pull the second one first. Get closer. Yeah, not really. Okay. All right. So that's how I start. So this is how they want me to start. So tension is being held on here, being pulled a little bit, full tensions here, okay? I let it through. So I just pulled the second cross. There's some tension on that first one, uh, but I'll show you later what else is done. So I, they also want, us to string one ahead so as you guys know stringing one ahead uh there's a lot of benefits to that um, instead of going with against the grain like you're running up a hill uh, stringing one ahead makes it a lot easier there's less friction And they also want you to straighten up each string so you don't have a rainbow after you uh, are done stringing. I'll show you what I mean. So as I pull tension, you straighten up each string.
the last two crosses. Not feature. Not feature turned on. Full tension. Last cross. Get rid of some slack. Cro closest tie knot is going to be this here. And it's a cross. Again, just like the other knots. Well, I'll do it the other way for you guys so it doesn't get so confusing. I'm gonna get another one of these. This is also an extender, so. Towards me, right? Away up towards me, okay? One more. I like using these things because I don't have to grip it. So it's automatically gripped. So all I have to do is just worry about pulling tension, pulling it, holding it like that. So I'm gonna let it go while holding it like that. And then like that. A starting clamp, also an extender to the machine. Um, I just like to hold it like this, right? So base clamp, up clamp, down. Cut off the slack. At the first original cross that was never tensioned, now I'm gonna tension it. I'm putting on the knot. So what that knot feature does is it adds 10% more tension to the whole thing. So like I said before. So now I'm pulling tension on it. I'm gonna take this clamp here, that closest side, and then hold that down now. Okay, and I'm gonna take this starting clamp off. Now it's it's all tensioned. Take the closest cross. Right? So I'm gonna do the same thing. This is an ending knot. Over, under, through. I'm not gonna do the fancy way, I'm just gonna show you this way. You guys already know the fancy way. So Tension back, come back around, pull. Do it again. Towards me, up, out, towards me, right? Holding tension on it. Base clamp out, regular clamp out. And I'm gonna cut one eighth left. It's about right, tuck it in. Make sure you tuck it in. Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna take it off now. So, so 12 and six first, so the middle one's first, and then the outer. Inner, 12 and six, outer, until we're out. We're out now. See that racket? The strings are pretty much straight, right off the machine. No need to straighten out those strings. I mean, you see some of these stringers that take the, the awl and go and does this. If you do it with this technique, uh, it's pretty much straight right out of the machine and ready to get stenciled. Uh, ready to get stenciled and wrapped and ready to go. So that's the one thing that I learned from this technique that it's going to be straight and it's going to be very accurate. 
If you do this consistently, uh, you'll get a very accurate pro ready string job. This is definitely not one of the fastest ways to string, uh, but definitely one of the more accurate ways to string. Uh, so basically I understand, you know, the Japanese concept of detail, um, having, you know, the, the Yonic symbol be one way so that if you do this, it doesn't alter anything. Um, so little, little things. If everybody did it the same way, let's say I couldn't string for that particular pro on my machine. Um, somebody else who does it the same way, hopefully the pro won't notice too much of a difference. Because at the end of the day, the pro really only wants normacy, consistency. You know, every pro I've ever asked, all they want you to do is you're the same person that strings on the same machine for the whole tournament for them. Because every time I go to a tournament, they all, even though they have like six or seven rackets ready to go that need stringing, they always hand me one first, right? And I, I asked, I was like, why are you handing me one? You got six need, that needs to be done. And they go, I need to gauge if you're tighter or looser than I'm used to. So for them, tension, feel is very, very delicate and very, very important. So after that first string job, they will tell me you're too loose or too tight and they'll make the adjustment. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them below. I'll answer them as soon as I can. If you have any suggestions of what you would like me to review, uh, let me know. I'll try to do it um, as soon as I can too. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.